Hallo, hallo. Hallo, hallo. Einen wunderschönen hallo. guten Morgen, Herr Schwarzenegger. Danke, danke. Wie geht's? Es ist schöner Morgen. Ja. Es wird jetzt schon Licht bei uns hier rüben. Ja. Ja, es ist jetzt sehr early, ha? Huh? Es ist 4.30 Uhr hier. Mr. Regan, hallo, das ist uh, Lisa. I'm doing the interview with you. Good morning, how are you, Lisa? Very nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> It's nice to meet you as well. Mr. Schwarzenegger, uh, thank you very much for taking uh, your time uh, to do this uh, interview. You have been the Terminator, you have been the Governator, now you are the Climate Nator, and you have been committed mm -hmm. to climate protection uh, for years, and you give a lot of hope uh, to people. But if we look back at the last uh, 30 years, there has been a lot of talk, but um, actually uh, less action. So um, if we look nowadays, can you still give us hope that we can get um, climate change under control? Well, you know, I feel like this is the second time that I'm dealing with a major movement. I remember that way back I was dealing with uh, the fitness movement. And I remember when I said in the 60s, in the late 60s, early 70s, that one day there will be as many gymnasiums as there are supermarkets and grocery stores, uh, and people were laughing at that. It took 40 years, but now we are at a place where every hotel in the world has a gymnasium. Every YMCA, every the WCA, every fire station, every university, every sports club, everywhere is a gymnasium. So it took 40 years. Uh, so, I mean, it's, uh, it takes time to do those things, you know, to make everyone become part of it. So this is why I never give up. You know, there is a, I remember when you learned this in weightlifting. I mean, there was times when I wanted to do a 500-pound bench press. I tried it 10 times and I couldn't do it, but the 11th time I did it. So you never, ever give up. You mm -hmm. fail a lot of times on the way to success, but you don't give up. So I think that I have big hopes. As I have said in my speech, there are so many different signs that indicate of how fast now electric cars are coming up, how fast technology is becoming part of the solution, how fast we are, we are seeing now things developing with uh, uh, renewable energy and stuff like that. So I have great hope. And I think the most important thing is that we need to really communicate the right way mm -hmm. in order to bring also the people along on this whole movement. Yeah, it's good to hear that you still have hope, but uh, we have two years of pandemic. <laughs> we have the war, war in Ukraine. Uh, everything is getting uh, more expensive if people are afraid. So how do you get people to deal with climate protection now? How much power is um, still there to save the climate? Well, first of all, let me just say to you that all of the things that you just mentioned, if it is an economic decline, if it is an inflation rate, or if it is a, a pandemic, or if it is the, the war in, in the Ukraine or anything like that, those are just excuses by world leaders Uh, not to move forward. They say, well, we can't do this now because there's the war in the Ukraine, or we can't really move forward now because we are concentrating on COVID. Uh, it is bullshit. It's absolute bullshit because we can do multitasking. There is we always, there's always a crisis. There's always a downturn <laughs> economic. There's always an inflation. There's always unemployment. There's always the, the things you're dealing with, with weather conditions that are unusual, or, or a pandemic or something like that, or war. So that's the way life is in the world, right? So there's always something going on. That does not mean that we should stop moving forward when it comes to environmental issues. We in California have always moved forward, even though we had disastrous situations with big fires and all kinds of other mm. issues, but we moved forward with that. So we have to encourage politicians to just keep moving forward and to work together and to take politics out of the, uh, the, the equation and to make this just like, uh, not to be a party servant, but to be a people's servant. That is the most important thing. And yeah. as I said also earlier, it's important that we bring everyone together in this and not villainize anyone, but just kind of bring everyone together and start working together. And then I think we can accomplish it. Mm -hmm. That's true. But the question is if a people still can focus on, on this topic. We just have to remind them that's communication. That's why I say the mm -hmm. environmentalists making a big mistake mm -hmm. by always talking about climate. 
Uh, people don't register that, and they don't see this as an emergency. We have to talk about pollution and how many people are getting killed right now because of pollution. Mm -hmm. So I'm a big believer, because of California's experience, we communicated to the people, we made them be part of the solution. So whenever there was a kind of a big debate or something, the people were behind us, and that's how we got the, uh, the very, very strict laws passed mm -hmm. in California. So it's very, very important that we communicate better than they have been in the past. Okay, communication is very important. Um, you once uh, made a, a really good quote, quote I think. Uh, you compared climate protection to bodybuilding, and you said uh, you can train your biceps, your triceps, your abs, but only at one time, not all together. So is this the problem, that we focus uh, on climate change and climate protection on too many topics? Well, you know, I think that uh, this is a, a, an issue that environmentalists are dealing with, uh, because you can only overload, you can only give people so many problems. You know, one talks about the plastic in the ocean, the other one is talking about the pollution, you know, in the air, the other one is talking about you know, climate change, the other one is talking about this. And that. So there's just too many issues. Mm -hmm. I think what we need to concentrate on most of all is on pollution. Mm -hmm. Pollution is the evil. Pollution kills people. It just destroys us. And I think it is it, the most important thing is that we use, instead of a shotgun approach, where we try to hit all the different issues, we have a rifle approach where we hit one target. The target is, let's reduce pollution and focus on that. Yes, we can do the other things also at the same time, but we got to focus just on this issue. And this is what I, why I was kind of comparing it to bodybuilding, that you can only do one thing at a time. Yes, mm -hmm. we have to train the total body, but you can only do one muscle at a time. Okay, I see. Uh, Mr. Regan, uh, good to have you here. Um, to put it bluntly, you are the chief environmentalist in the USA, um, the big boss, uh, and you're responsible to advance the commitment of um, President Biden's government climate uh, commitment. How difficult is this? Um, because, um, after all, the US is the second largest carbon dioxide emitter. Well, you know, the president has been demonstrating leadership from day one, and it is a huge challenge, but it's also a significant opportunity. The governor's got it right. Uh, we have to bring everyone along. Uh, we have to simplify our messages. Uh, and the reality is, is that there's a significant opportunity in reducing climate pollution uh, and creating jobs and protecting lives. And so I think we have to package the message in a way that we talk about saving lives reducing the risk of asthma, respiratory distress, that pollution that hurts human beings while also talking about the pollution that hurts the planet. But we're also talking about advanced technologies and job creations and building new economies. And so this message, while simple, uh, has multiple layers in terms of how it's gonna uplift modern day society. And I think we just have to hone that message Uh, the president is doing a great job in demonstrating what we need to do domestically while also reintroducing ourselves to the world stage and, again, putting that pressure mm -hmm. globally to ensure that we beat this climate crisis. Mm -hmm. um, does the war in Ukraine help to implement the measures because people realize how endangered the supply is and um, how dependent we made ourselves from other countries? You know, our hearts go out to the Ukrainian people as we watch this war play out. Uh, but the reality is, at home, uh, if we had invested in clean energy uh, for the past 20 years like we have done in the past two to three years, we would not be as reliant on fossil fuels. Uh, we would not be contributing uh, to uh, the situation in terms of Uh, providing resources to fossil fuel industries, um, but more so focused on clean energies and not reliant on the or, or victims of the price volatility that we're seeing on the global level. Uh, mm -hmm. So we need to uh, double down on our clean energy investments because it's good for, uh, for the environment, it's good for public health, it's good for national security, uh, it's good for being globally competitive. Mm -hmm. Mr. Schwarzenegger, what's your opinion on this question? Uh, does the war in the Ukraine um, give a chance to get out of uh, fossil fuels more quickly? I think that people will realize that uh, I think that Franz uh, Timmermans has hit the nail on the head when he said that it was greed. You know, that's why they are now in this situation. They wanted to get the cheapest fuel. I think that it really is a wake-up call. 
uh, to the people in Europe and I think all over the world that uh, we need to be energy independent. That's the most important thing. And there is nothing that can make you more independent like solar, for instance. I mean, just uh, think about it. you have a house. You put solar panels on it. You don't even have to be on a grid anymore. You don't have to be connected to any power lines or anything else anymore. So it creates independence. And so the more we go with renewable energy, with hydro and with wind and with solar and with geothermal and those kind of things, the better we are off. And I think that the key thing is that governments have to recognize the fact that they've been subsidizing fossil fuels for endless amount of decades, that we should do the same kind of subsidies for renewable energy. This is the, the, where the, the, I think the key factor is that we can really move forward in a very quick way with renewable energy. Mm -hmm. uh, climate protection sometimes um, has a negative connotation for people uh, because they are afraid of losing their privileges, um, of losing things they love, for example, uh, big uh, cars. Is that so? Is it really about renunciation because uh, rethinking alone doesn't help anymore? Well, you don't have to lose big cars. You can have the biggest car in the world if it is electric or if it is hydrogen fueled. So, I mean, the key thing is, is that's why I say always technology will save us all because I never, ever gave up my big hummers. Mm -hmm. I had the biggest uh, military trucks, but I put an electric engine in it or buy a fuel engine in it. I change the engine. That's the thing, because we have the technology now. You don't have to give up anything. All you have to do is just recognize the technology that is available and go with this new technology. I think there's so much that is going to happen now with, with cars, and I think also with ships. We see now already ships being produced that have you know, alternative fueled uh, you know, engines. I think that this is where the, 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 the direction is where we are going. And we have to just really make government responsible mm -hmm. to kind of support those kind of things and move along with those things. So that's, I think that's the way to go. Okay, you said you, you still drive big cars, but they uh, go on a biofuel. Can this be used um, to reach people who actually reject climate protection? Well, look, I don't care if anyone rejects climate protection. You know, I think that uh, that's not really the issue. Let's assume that there's people arguing against it and they say that that doesn't happen, climate change doesn't happen. And all I say to them, I said, you know, you're right, but let's fight pollution. And then they immediately say, yeah, yeah, I, I want to fight pollution. Even to the most conservative Republicans in Washington, when I, when I talked about climate change, they always said, well, I'm not so sure if this is really man-created and all this, we're going through some cyclical kind of thing and all that stuff. And I said, yeah, you, you may be right, I said. Uh, but the, the thing we have to really fight is pollution, right? And they say, I'm on board on that one. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have to fight pollution. We have to protect the people. So we have to just change the way we are addressing this issue. And this is no different than, again, it goes back to my bodybuilding days. When we said bodybuilding, people walked away. But when we said progressive resistance training and, uh, you know, fitness training, when we called it something else, all of a sudden everyone jumped on board and everyone started doing it. As a mm -hmm. matter of fact, even Michael, he comes to Gold's gym every time he comes to California and he <laughs> works out with me. I mean, everyone works out now. So this is just because we changed the wording and the way we approach the whole thing and the thing we have to do with the environment. Okay, really, you're working out together? Well, for sometimes when he comes to California, <laughs> he takes me down to Gold Gym and we pump up together, yes. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> um, one question to, to Chaos, Mr. Schwarzenegger, because the EU has made important decisions uh, on climate protection. Uh, in 2035, it's in 12 years, there will be no more cars with uh, combustion engines. And there is a big discussion going on uh, in Europe uh, with um, a little, uh, many different point of views. So what's your opinion? Is this a chance or is it a disaster? Well, uh, it depends how you uh, put it. Mm -hmm. If you say there are no cars with combustion engine, I think this is an absolute nonsense. Because if someone owns an old BMW from 1959, why shouldn't he be driving this car? It's a collector's item, maybe, or an old Mercedes, an old Pullman or something like that. So there will always be combustion engines around, like we have in California. But what you do is you try to incentivize people to buy electric cars, then eventually all of the sales 
of cars uh, or electric or hydrogen fueled cars. So that's really the goal that you want to do. You mm -hmm. don't want to say there will be no more. We won't allow any more combustion engine because people say, these guys are crazy, then, government. What are they talking about? Mm -hmm. I'm going to be revolting this whole thing. So, no. You want to encourage people to buy electric cars. That's where the action is. And okay. not only cars, but trucks. There's enormous amount of trucks that are coming out now that people are producing that they're electric. And even huge, huge trucks, delivery trucks and all this. So the technology is going more and more in that direction. Mm -hmm. And especially now, it's good because the oil price in the world is rising all the time. Mm -hmm. So the guys that are now going to a charging station and they plug in the electric cars, they're laughing at all of this stuff because it's so much cheaper cheaper now to go and drive an electric car than to buy, go and buy like sometimes gasoline costs six, seven dollars in the United States a gallon. So this is a lot of money. Mm -hmm. You know, I often go on my friend's nerves because um, I say, uh, please turn off the light if you are not in the room. Uh, please turn off the water if you don't need it. And some of my friends say, um, you are naive because uh, one single person cannot make a change uh, in a climate saving or climate change. Um, is it like this? Uh, do you think it's um, a position of an individual or a position of politics? Well, I think Michael had a really great point earlier when he said this kid is turning off the lights when he walks out the room. It's just natural for him. And uh, my, for my kids, it wasn't that natural. They didn't turn out the lights. So I had to punish them. And I have to say, every time you don't turn out the lights, I unscrew a light bulb in your uh, uh, chandelier. Mm -hmm. And so they said, okay, well, there's six light bulbs, so go ahead, just unscrew it. Well, by the time, six days later, when it got dark, then he got scared and he comes screaming at me and says, Daddy, I'm afraid <laughs> to get in my room because it's dark. I say, well, it's dark because you don't turn out the lights. <laughs> so they learned very quickly. And from that point on, they always turned off the lights. Okay. And the same is with the showers. I had a son that had this habit of sitting there in the shower. He had a bench in the shower like an old folks' home. He had a bench in a shower, and he was there sitting in a shower in a hot shower for 15 minutes. And I said, you know how much this wastes on energy? So mm -hmm. I put a meter in there that after five minutes, the shower turns off, the, the hot water turns off. Then all of a sudden, it got cold. He stopped that <laughs> right away. So this is the kind of things we have to do. Yeah. I felt personally responsible. I think that each and every one of us has the power to create change. If it is to turn off mm -hmm. the lights, if it is to lose, use less water, if it is to buy an electric car, if it is to look at the label when you buy a product and you say, oh, this comes from overseas. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to buy that because that means it has to go on a ship and mm. ships are big polluters. So we have to educate the people on this stuff. And then the young people and middle aged people and older people all will get on board and go in that direction. Yeah. Mr. Regan, what's your um, opinion? Who is more responsible for climate protection, politics or each of us? You know, I think uh, the governor's got it right. And when I think about Governor Schwarzenegger and just how much impact he has had um, on this topic, it reminds me that one person can make a difference. Uh, I think that there's a balance. I think that there is a public education campaign, as he mentioned earlier, to encourage more of us to be personally responsible and help contribute to the reduction of pollution. But listen, we have to hold polluters accountable. We have to transition our economy. We have to take advantage of technology and I think the governor's right also when he talks about cars. You know, if anyone loves cars, uh, if you test drive an electric vehicle, if you like speed, if you like power, if you like torque, then you are gaining by purchasing an electric vehicle. You're not losing. So as we move forward and we think about this clean energy economy, it's not about sacrifice. It's mm -hmm. about opportunity. It's about gaining. And it's about protecting the planet and being more healthy. And so I think that there's a balance there. And I think we all should be rowing in the same direction. Yeah. For years, um, a climate policy has been a contested field in the U.S., uh, depending on which president uh, is uh, in power. The next presidential elections will um, take place in two years and Donald Trump could run again. Are the U.S. still a reliable partner when it comes up to climate protection? We're absolutely a reliable power. Listen, I think when you look at where we are today in 2022, the massive investments that have gone into clean energy, the number of jobs that have been created. Uh, companies are moving forward, not looking back. Political rhetoric and many in the Republican Party are not keeping pace with the direction of the economy. 
And so it's not about philosophy anymore. This is about the power of markets and technology and job creation and being globally competitive. Businesses are understanding this message. So the real question is not whether we're going to move forward. It's how quickly we're going to move. I believe that the investments and the direction that the president has put in place has created enough momentum that it will be very hard to turn that back. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Schwarzenegger. Yeah, I, I just want to do... I just wanted to just also say um, that earlier I complimented uh, Secretary Regan for making it possible for us in California to get the waiver from the federal government. Mm -hmm. So the federal government is extremely important with the help. Mm -hmm. But in the end, it is the state that does the work. So you should understand that we don't operate like European countries where the law is for the entire nation. Yeah, there are laws, federal laws for the entire mm -hmm. nation, but the states are really doing most of the work when it comes to the environment. So even though, for like for instance, when I was governor, the Bush administration was in charge, right? There was a, President Bush was in power, then he was president. Mm -hmm. They were not as inclined to, uh, you know, really work as positively with the environment as I wanted to. Yeah. But we as a state, at the same time, did the most extraordinary work, and we passed the most extraordinary and toughest environmental laws and made the most progress, even though there was a Republican administration and mm -hmm. someone that maybe was not as enthusiastic about the environment. So I think it is important for people to understand that, yes, it helps when you have a president that is pro-environment, mm -hmm. like uh, President Biden. That was really helpful. Yeah. All the way back, it started already with President Carter, who was one of the first presidents that really was kind of like talking about solar and wind and all of those kind of things. So that is always helpful. But if there's a Republican president there or someone that is maybe not as inclined to help with the environment, states still can do the work. Yeah. Cities can still do the work. And they are really uh, solving 70 to 80 percent of the problem in the United States is our states and cities rather than the federal government. Yeah, as you showed in uh, California, when you were governor, California is uh, right on the top when it comes to climate protection. Um, and Mr. Well, we are, and we are very proud of it. And, you know, it's not just because of me. I have to go back to Jerry Brown. When he was uh, governor of California in the 70s, he already then talked about, just like Jimmy Carter did, he was way out there in front talking about solar and about wind and all this. And people thought that he was crazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, what is this guy talking about? But he was right. He was out in front. And so then governors that came in after that continued building on that. And so we are all standing on shoulders of giants there when it comes to the environment. So I continued the work that previous government governors have done mm -hmm. in California. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we just... Uh, we have always been able to communicate with the public really well, so the public was 100 percent behind those environmental laws. So there was never a big fight about it. Mm. We just moved forward. And even the governor today, Governor Newsom, he moves forward and makes the big steps in the environment. So that's the important thing is, is to, to really let the states do their job, let the mm. cities do their job. And the federal government should encourage and should help, like the federal government and like uh, Secretary Reagan helped us to get the federal waiver to make sure that we can regulate our own air. Yeah. You are grandpa of two. Um, what will the world look like uh, when <laughs> your grandchildren are grown up? Well, I hope fantastic. And that's what is our responsibility to make sure of that, you know, because we mm -hmm. got to protect the future. It's not just because of us. It is the future that is important here. And, you know, I love my two grandchildren and my children, and I want them to have a great future. And this is why we have to do this work. Mm -hmm. uh, no matter in which movie you embody heroes, and humanity needs heroes. So who is your personal hero when it comes to climate protection? I think that, uh, you know, it goes back to Jimmy Carter. Uh, I think that he does not get enough credit for that. He was one of the first ones on a national level that talked about that. I think people like Al Gore and, uh, you know, uh, President Biden, uh, President Clinton, uh, you know, there were a lot of really great presidents, even when you think about President Reagan and President Nixon, because it's important to mention that there's also Republicans that have done great work on the environment. President, uh, you know, Nixon created the EPA that mm -hmm. now, uh, you know, Michael Reagan is a secretary of. 
Uh, you know, it was it was under the Nixon administration, and it was a Republican uh, president. President Reagan created the Air Resources Board when he was governor of California, and that's what helped us really to accomplish all of our goals. Mm -hmm. So we we never are in a situation where we make a promise. And we don't keep it. The reason is because as soon as the law is passed, it gets handed over to the Air Resources Board, which is a total independent body, and they enforce then the laws. So this is the big, big advantage that we have. And if other countries would copy that, that mm -hmm. when a politician makes a promise and when they pass a law that they actually follow through, I think much more would happen. Uh, Mr. Schwarzenegger, may I ask you just that our audience understands where are you sitting right now? <laughs> what kind of I'm set? right now. I'm right now sitting on a movie set mm -hmm. in Toronto where I'm uh, filming my TV series for Netflix. It's mm -hmm. called FUBA, and this is a high-speed rail behind me oh, okay. that is, uh, you know, real high-speed rail, but it doesn't really move. So it's just, you know, <laughs> on a stage here where we're shooting a lot of the action sequences here. Mm -hmm. And it is, for me, it is right now 5.30 in the morning. Uh, so I've been up all night. I've been filming all night. And then I basically just changed clothes and cleaned up a little bit to do my speech for our environmental conference. Mm -hmm. And now I'm sitting here doing this interview with uh, Secretary Michael Regan and with you. So I'm having a great time. Oh, that's good to hear because I saw the, the blood behind you on the window and I was just wondering what happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, someone got blown off the train when they were outside, and uh, they were not fortunate. Okay. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. Do I have still time for one more question, or um, are you very tired, Mr. Schwarzenegger? I'm a machine. Machines <laughs> okay. don't get tired. <laughs> what a stupid question. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> Mr. Schwarzenegger, even you are a machine, I think maybe it's time for a coffee now. <laughs> it's always time for a coffee. It's always time but for they, coffee. Sadly to say, they don't have the real good <laughs> Austrian coffee here. <laughs> yes, unfortunately. But no, I read, yeah. I read that you reduced your uh, meat consumption. Is this also because of yes. uh, climate protection? Well, that's one of the reasons. I think that, uh, you know, to raise the cattle and all the livestock, uh, you know, it creates around 25% of the pollution in the world. So I think that if we all kind of eat less meat, it will reduce that. Um, but that besides that, it's also a health reason. Uh, I was told when I was like, you know, I think it was around 10 years ago, back uh, Jim Cameron, uh, the director of Terminator and Titanic and uh, all those great movies, uh, he is a fanatic about, you know, uh, this issue and not eating meat. And so he told me about it, that it's healthier not to eat meat. And then I asked doctors, and they all agreed with that, that yeah. it would be better for my heart and for my uh, you know, circulation and for the cardiovascular system and all of those things uh, to eat less meat. So I now, I would say that I've reduced by around 70% or so my meat intake. I feel much better because of that. I think it's been great, but like I said, I only say 70% because when I go to Austria and I eat my Wiener Schnitzel, you know, I'm not going to stop. You know, I have to have that Wiener Schnitzel. <laughs> or every so often I put on a big steak on my barbecue, I have that. But I mean, in general, throughout the week, I don't eat any meat. Yeah, that, that, that's good to hear that you still eat uh, Schnitzel. Because, you know, I tried once a cricket. And I don't know if you two already tried insects. Do, do you like it as a climate diet? Insects? Yes. Well, I, 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 I ate insects. I think there was a movie that I did and I had to eat some insects, some grilled insects. I don't know what it was, uh, ants or whatever, or some, mm -hmm. some bugs of some sort. And they tasted actually good. It was a little bit with salt and stuff like that and it tasted good. But it's not my regular diet, I have to admit. Yeah. I'd rather eat my Wiener Schnitzel, to be <laughs> honest with you. And I hope, I yeah. hope that, uh, Michael, that you had the chance of eating some good Wiener Schnitzel because Austria has the best Wiener Schnitzel and after the Wiener Schnitzel, save yourself some room in your stomach so you can eat the Kaiserschmarrn. The Kaiserschmarrn <laughs> is fantastic in Austria. And don't forget, with that, a little bit of a glass of Austrian wine. And then after the Kaiserschmarrn, of course, a good schnapps. Uh, <laughs> I'm talking now, huh? <laughs> uh, yeah, Mr. Regan, try well, it. I, I, I can say, Governor, I've checked, two, I've checked two of those boxes last night. And I'll check that third box tonight. I, I will say I have not had any insects. I don't really plan on that being in my diet, but the schnitzel, I can go for that twice. 
<laughs> Good. Okay. Very nice. Good to talk to you both, okay? Thank you very much. Thank you very much for talking to Thank us. Thank you so much.